Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Working at Woodworking Podcast. This is episode number 27, Choosing a Point of Sale System for Your Craft Show, Part 2. Last week, we talked about a couple third-party providers that will get you set up with a an app for your cell phone and a card reader and a system of accepting credit card payments from your customers and then processing that and getting the money into your bank account. We talked about Square, Shopify, and Squarespace, and we also mentioned that one of the first things you might want to do is check with your own bank or credit union. They may have a system already in place for you. One thing I left out about the Shopify Lite is that you can use buy buttons from them. And what these are are little pieces of code that you can embed into your own website or into social media. And they're pretty simple to set up. They're pretty simple to use. You don't need to be a programmer to do this, but it's something that is included with that $9 a month, as well as the the actual point of sale system. So today we're going to continue with a few more vendors that you might want to consider. If you haven't listened to part one, I would encourage you to do so. It will give you a little bit more of an overview and some definitions that we discussed that I think you will find helpful. So the other vendor you might want to consider is Etsy. Now, if you have an Etsy store, this can make a lot of sense. Now, Etsy doesn't actually have their own system, but rather they use, yep, you guessed it, Square for their technology. They used to have their own system, but apparently that didn't work all that well. They scrapped it and they just went in association with Square and is using that platform. The nice thing about this is if you are selling things in the Etsy shop and at craft shows or your own out of your own workshop, everything is pretty sim- seamless. The transactions go back and forth. Your tracking goes back and forth and it works pretty well. If you don't sell on Etsy, I don't see any point of doing so. Just go ahead and stay with Square or another vendor. If you're not selling on Etsy, well, that's probably another episode right there. Now I would like to talk about something that's a little different that might not apply to everyone, but a lot of people use QuickBooks as their accounting package. If you are using QuickBooks, check out their Go Payment system. This is a system much like the other ones we just talked about. You get a standard card reader that you can dip and tap. I don't believe that you can swipe with the Go Payment system. Swipes are going away anyway, so that's not a big deal. And the fees are slightly higher. What I what do I mean by slightly? Well, if one's charging 2.6% plus 10 cents. I think QuickBooks was something like 3.1, 2.9, something like that. You know, we can quibble over decimal places, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not really that important. I think more important is how comfortable are you with the point of sale system? How easy is it? And how many problems crop up. If you're really struggling with your system, it might be time to scrap that and go to something else because your time is valuable, more valuable than one or two tenths of a percentage point. So don't get real hung up in that. Of course, with the QuickBooks online account, you can send invoices, which I find very convenient. I don't use QuickBooks, but I have another system. You can also uh, transfer e-checks or electronic checks and take ACH payments. ACH stands for Automated Clearinghouse. It's a way of particularly business-to-business transactions can be made very cheaply. Some ACH transactions are 
free, no cost. Other vendors may charge like 1%. It's easier than writing a check and dropping it in the mail. Cost? Yeah, you're going to have a monthly fee here of at least $25, but you're also getting the accounting package with that. Would I go out and sign up and pay $25 just to get their point of sale system? No, I think there's other options out there. But if you're looking for an accounting program, this might be a a good choice for you. There are no additional fees for using the QuickBooks Go Payment system, other than the transaction fees, of course. Don't confuse Go Payment with Go Pay. That is a totally different animal. It's a, a payment system that primarily operates in overseas countries. Um, don't don't confuse the two. They sound alike. The websites are totally different. My general impression of the QuickBooks system is. Well, it's QuickBooks. I actually talked to a human. And since they were paying a human to talk to me, yeah, you're going to pay a little bit more for this. In the long run, it might be well worth it if you're looking for that accounting package. They are very aggressive in their sales pitch. I mean, very aggressive. So if you're calling and inquiring, just keep that in mind. Do I like QuickBooks? Well, they're QuickBooks. I used them for a dozen years in uh, in bookkeeping at in retail. There's good things about it. There's bad things about it. My overall impression is if you really suck at accounting, there's a lot of things that QuickBooks would really help you out if this is something you kind of have a handle on and you have some spreadsheet skills. You can handle most of this yourself. And there's actually a podcast number, I don't know, four, five, seven, something like that, where I go into the entire accounting process for your small business. You might want to check that out. Okay, we get to our last recommendation. That is PayPal Zettle. Weird name, I know. Zettle. Z-E-T-T-L-E. They used to have a program in PayPal called PayPal Here. That's going away. That's being replaced by Zettle. If I remember correctly, Here would not process some of the newer technology, the, the the tap technology or the dip technology. It was only a swipe technology. So this is the new and improved upgraded system. In fact, it doesn't even take swipe. It only does the, the, the tap and the chip. And the PayPal Here system actually ends this year. So if you are currently using that system, it's going to end. You're going to need to transfer over to the Zettle. How does it work? Well, you get this. It's a card reader, but it looks a little bit more like a calculator if you're old enough to remember what calculators look like. If you're not old enough, just open up your smartphone and hit the calculator app. Pretty much the same thing. They charge 2.29% plus $0.09 cents for a tap or dip transaction and 3.49% plus $0.09 cents for a manual entry transaction. There are no monthly fees. That's it. The only money you're going to pay is for that transaction fees. Equipment cost $29.95 for that, that card reader. It's not free. Well, maybe it's actually worth something that way. If you need a second one, that is $79. So not exactly cheap. How do you get started? Go online and apply. It takes a few minutes or possibly a few days. PayPal is very rigorous in setting up an account. You have to get verified for everything. You get verified that you are a human. You get verified that you live at the address you say you live at. They verify your phone number. They verify your email. They verify your bank account. And the way that works is whenever you, you know, enter your bank routing number and account number, they make a small deposit into the account like maybe 29 cents, 74 cents, it, it, it varies. And then a few days later, they take that money back out just to see if 
that is a real bank account and it's functional. So they don't mess around with this. They're, they're very careful. Again, don't try to set this up the day before your first art or craft show. It's not going to work. It's going to take probably a few days, maybe a few hours, but more likely a few days to get all of this in, in line. So it may take you a couple days to get all of this set up. So don't wait to the last minute. Funds availability, one day or like 36 hours if you're on a weekend, roughly or longer if you used a manual entry for the transaction. Most of these vendors will keep, will hold that money for a longer period of time. On PayPal's website, they say 21 days, and the rep that I talked to uh, indicated that. She said that they do that because of fraud. That gives the system a time to to detect that to to check that also since PayPal is set up for primarily online transactions this gives them an extra um, cushion so to speak to detect the uh, fraudulent transactions if you are giving the item to the customer at the time of the transaction, you need to indicate that, and the wait time is only seven days. That's only for the manual transactions. The regular, you know, tap or, or dip, those go straight through and you'll have your funds, you know, within 24, 36 hours. Hidden fees, none that I knew of, none that the uh, nice young lady I talked to uh, was aware of. Extras or bonus with using the PayPal Zettle is, well, you have PayPal, and that can be an incredibly good thing. You can transfer money to anyone, you know, send money to your grandmother, your grandchild, your, your, your kid in college. You don't need to use that strictly for business. If you do, you're going to have to break that out in your, your accounting. You also have pay buttons available or buy buttons that you can embed in your own website or in social media so that you can make transactions there. They have several other checkout type systems that investigate that might work really well for you. You cannot build a website with PayPal, which I find rather refreshing. Their website is decent and you can get a human on the phone. They're based out of San Jose, California, and everything seems to work pretty well. A lot of people do not like PayPal. I don't know if it's Elon Musk. I don't know if it's something that's happened in the past. There's a group of people who have had problems. Maybe it's kind of that rigorous checkout thing, uh, verification process that they go through. Maybe... PayPal is being used for not so upright, outstanding things, and they got tagged, and that's why they're pissed. I don't know. They are not very Second Amendment friendly, and if you don't know what that is, you can look it up. But we're not dealing with that very much as far as as woodworkers. My general impression, I've had no problems with PayPal, and I have been using them for over 20 years. My Website uses the PayPal buttons to handle the transactions. It's not the shiniest tool in the world, but it works. It's simple. I can use the invoices. In fact, honestly, I've been using the invoices for a couple of years now. I don't even bother, you know, doing the old manual invoices in uh, a spreadsheet or, or a Word document. I just let PayPal do it. And a lot of my customers just pull out the credit card and they pay right there. You do need to factor in that 2.26 or 3.5 or whatever that transaction fee is into your prices. And I went through this probably, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago. Most people were using either cash or checks. But when I started to use PayPal more for the invoices or people were requesting to pay with a credit card, you're losing three and a half dollars or three bucks on every hundred dollars. And, you know, 
over a year, that can add up. And so what I've done is I've basically added 3% to my bill, assuming that the person is going to be using a credit card and that covers that fee right off off the bat. That's just built into the the, the cost of, of doing business, built into the pricing structure. I've been very happy with their transfers. It takes generally a day. I think they say one to three days or something, but all the transfers I've done from the PayPal account into my bank account, my credit union account, it's, it's usually, you know, 24 hours, maybe 36 hours. And you can get a PayPal credit card if you want. I don't see a real need for that. It's actually a debit card. I've, I've, I've never gotten into that. I, I don't need that functionality. So what is my top pick of all of these third party providers? Well, if I was smart enough not to build my own website, I would pick Square. I know a lot of people who have used Square. They have been very happy with that. I've I've actually been able to talk to the company, and they are being very aggressive in their their tech technological pursuits. They're they're going after the market. The other ones, I've not had good fuzzy feelings as far as communication. To me, that's important. If you're younger, you're probably well, you'd prefer not to have to talk to someone, most likely, and you do everything through through email, chat room, service tickets, things like that. I do have a Square and a Shopify account. They are basically dormant. I opened them up to basically test the technology. I would build, you know, website using their buy buttons and things like that just to see how it all worked. And I've ended up going with with uh, PayPal. If you are looking just for a point of sale system, something that you can take to the craft show or use in your shop, I would look at Square and PayPal. They are the only two unencumbered systems, shall we say, that you don't have to get into a monthly fee. You don't get a, an accounting package rolled into this. It's um, uh, simple. You know, the transaction fee is what you are going to pay. Nothing more, nothing less. So no matter what you pick, it's really key that you start early in getting this set up. Get your terminal, get your account, get your card reader, and practice. You don't want your first transaction being the one at the craft show and it doesn't go through. That is not a good position to be in. So friends family, spouses, get some beta testers. You can run a transaction for a dollar or five dollars or something like that. Learn how to do a refund on the transaction. I wouldn't do three dozen transactions, but one, two, three, just to get a feel for it should be fine. If you get this early enough, you're probably going to be doing some transactions out of your shop that you could use it for that just to get the feel for it and get comfortable with it. And also, remember, this isn't just for craft shows. You're using it in your shop. Maybe you're going to a customer's home to do some work. You can take payment right there. Pull out your cell phone, the card reader, credit card, debit card. Boom, you're done. You have been paid. There's a lot to be said for you know money in the hand instead of I'll invoice you later or I will pay you later. I mean, I readily accept money. So other methods of payment that you will probably come across, um, Venmo is one that is a PayPal product. It's a way of transferring money between typically individuals, not so much businesses. Cash App is a very uh, similar system where you can transfer money back and forth. It's particularly popular with the the younger crowd. Apple Pay is very popular. This is where we get into the near field communication, the NFC technology, and we do that tap thing at the at the counter, at the restaurant, wherever. Samsung, not to be outdone, has their own system like that. Google, of course, has their system of taps. You may come across a uh, some prominent 
players in the uh, the big league. Uh, Stripe is one, and also Authorized Net. These integrate with merchant accounts, which we talked about in the last episode. Uh, probably not where you need to go, but they are out there. They're designed a little bit more for for you know large companies, hundred thousand dollars maybe and over. And no matter what system you get. Yeah, you're going to get a 1099K. That's that new uh, uh, tax regiment that was introduced this year that will take effect next year in which PayPal or Square and the others are going to be sending the government a 1099K letting them know that you processed, you know, $837 through your account, then the federal government is going to match that up on your tax return to make sure that you're not squirreling away money unfairly. Speaking of taxes, it is go time. If you don't have your taxes done right now, you need to get on it. Speaking from experience, I am way behind this year, and I have definitely got to get this crushed or I'm going to be in trouble. Just a little heads up. I had a nice phone call from a gentleman in Florida named Justin. He has a company called Shift Colors Bait Works LLC. His website is shiftcolorsbait.com. I'll put that in the show notes. He makes fishing lures and he sells them at arts and craft shows. And it sounds like he's doing pretty good. He has a, a full-time job and is kind of doing this on the side. But, you know, nice website. He uses uh, Shopify. He's been very happy with, with Shopify. And he passed on a, a tip that I thought was kind of ingenious and also solves a problem at the same time. Since he's at a, a kind of a general, you know, arts and crafts show, not necessarily a, you know, a, a sporting event, a, a, f a fishing show, he hears the statement all the time, these look really nice, but do they catch fish? And of course, he has to go into, you know, a lengthy answer to that. And to solve that problem, he blew up one of his photos of a giant tarpon that he caught on one of his lures and, and had that made into a large poster board that he has on display in his booth. And so now when he gets that question, he can just take and point to the photo and that answers the question. I thought that was a, a, a clever solution to a, a problem that uh, I'm sure he probably gets all the time. So recommendations for the week, other than getting your taxes done, um, check out Justin's uh, website, and I mentioned last week nerdwallet.com as a, uh, a potential source for your investigative process. Remember, a lot of these websites that I found were, were kind of pretty much clickbait or kind of a fake review site. So, so be careful, you know, tread, tread lightly. Missed jobs. Yeah, there's furniture repair. It just seems like everybody is trying to get their furniture repair. Uh, some outdoor furniture, and oh my gosh, unfortunately, I am just not in a position of getting this done. I have had some uh, phone calls and emails about getting canoes restored, and that's kind of a, a passion right there, and I don't turn those down. Although, I do try to delay them as long as I can. If any of you out there has a passion for canoeing, for old canoes, wood canvas canoes, antique canoes, I would encourage you to investigate, you know, repairing, restoration work on these. I can name probably all the canoe stores, restores I know on one hand, maybe two hands. But that's it. They're just not out there anymore. I'd love to talk to you about that. If, if you have skills, which if you're listening to this podcast, I'm sure you do, and you do have that type of passion, um, contact me. I would love to, uh, to discuss the, uh, the possibilities with you. Otherwise, I want to thank you for listening to the podcast. As always, this is episode number 27, which means that I have done this for half a year. 
wow, never really expected it, but happy that it's here. I'm full in for doing another half year. Then we evaluate. If you'd like to support me, there's Patreon. You can always buy me a cup of coffee, and I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, you can visit the website or give me a call, 812-325-9823. I'd love to chat. Until next week, happy woodworking.